Hi everyone, welcome back to the b i z i t Jeju Global YouTube channel. Today I'm here at the Jeju bus terminal with my colleague Jiwon. Hi. And we are going to do another bus tour to the mid mountain area, following the previous bus tours to the east coast and the west coast. Today we are going to visit two beautiful natural attractions, one theme park that is perfect for a family trip, and one that is educational with just one bus route, so you don't have to hassle to transfer to other buses. I think the itinerary today is perfect for natural lovers and people who like to walk, travelers accompanied by friends or family, or budget-conscious tourists. The bus we are going to take today is bus 231. Its route goes south through the eastern mid-mountain area using the road b o n y o n g l u and Namjoro. So this bus stops by aforementioned attractions, parks, and attractions located in the eastern mid-mountain area. The starting point of the route is the Jeju bus terminal. If you stay in Jeju city, you can take a taxi to the terminal for less than $10. The bus runs from 6 a.m. to 9.20 p.m. and it departs every 15 minutes, so we recommend that you download Kakao Map on your phone to check when the bus departs at your location. After about a 30-minute bus ride from the terminal, you can reach the first destination called Jeju Stone Park. The bus stops right at the entrance to the park. It may sound strange when you hear there is a park about stones, but this park has a museum with a wide range of educational exhibits about Jeju Island formation and environment. Visit the Jeju Stone Museum on Course 1 of the park. It has an exhibition about the formation of Jeju Island and the geography of the island. There are many more outdoor exhibitions about Jeju culture based on the natural atmosphere. Here, stone statue called d o r a r u b a n g and Korean traditional homes called Hanok are on display. And as we mentioned briefly, the park has three walking courses around, which many interesting outdoor exhibitions are found. So Jeju Stone Park can be a perfect destination for couples who want to spend time together or visitors who would like to let their kids run around in the wide open space. Tickets are 5,000 won or $5 for adults. To get basic information or check when this park opens or closes, visit the English website of Jeju Stone Park. Walking 10 minutes from the exit of Jeju Stone Park, you can find a theme park suitable for a family trip. It's called Ikulen Theme Park. <laughs> Exit Jeju Stone Park, cross the road, then turn right and walk for two minutes until you see a narrow path marked Ikulen Theme Park. This theme park is a popular attraction on Jeju Island. Many tourists visit Ikulen Theme Park with their kids. It's also a nice place for a couple to go on a date. The theme park consists of several zones of different settings. You can explore every zone of the theme park by hopping on and off the train. Most people spend over an hour having fun riding the train and taking photos. There are many nice places to take photos, for example, by a lake, posing in the gardens, with the beautiful flowers and art sculptures and more. One of the recommended things you can do here is to explore the natural Jeju forest, which is known as g u j a w a l It's unique to Jeju, formed on the volcanic rock and terrain. You can get more information on the English website, like the train schedule, the open hours, and the course guide. The admission fee is 14,000 won or $13 for visitors aged 19 or older. The ticket price includes a single round trip on the train. Our next destination is k u r e Natural Recreation Forest. There is one bus stop in between two. Actually, you can take the bus or simply walk. It's only 12 minutes on foot. 
This forest is a nice place to take a walk along the trail. It has uh, two courses. One is longer and the other is a short 40 minute course. Both passes through the Kutjawar forest, which is formed on the volcanic rock and terrain. The long course ends at a small volcanic cone known as an Orum, which you can climb up. For an easy walking tour, we recommend the short course. It doesn't have many ups and downs, and so it's not hard to walk. It is open from 7 a.m. and the last entry is 4 p.m. in the summer season and 3 p.m. in the winter season. The admission fee is 1,000 won or a dollar for adults. Well, we've already visited three spots with just one or two bus rides. This is why we recommend bus 231 to explore the attractions in the mid-mountain area. To have your lunch around the Pure Crossroad, you can find nice restaurants offering Jeju local menu items like noodles and pork broth, chicken shabu shabu, etc. Otherwise, you can enjoy a picnic with food you prepare in the Eco Landing Park. Getting off at the bus stop located in the crossroad and walking to the east, it takes half an hour by foot to get to the entrance of the Sangunburi Crater. This is definitely one of the best sightseeing spots on the island. As you climb up the crater through the beautiful path in the silver grass field, you can enjoy a panoramic view of Jeju Island. And at the end of the trail, you can see a big crater on the top. This attraction is open from 9 a.m. and the last entry is 6 p.m. from March to October and 5 p.m. from November to February. The admission fee is 6,000 won or $5 for adults. So that's everything we wanted to share with you today. This itinerary is very suitable for visitors traveling with kids or family members and at the same time, it's great for budget-minded travelers who want to keep their transportation expenses as low as possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future Visit Deji Global videos, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment below. And if you like today's video, please hit the subscribe button and click on the thumbs up. We will see you guys soon with more informative content. Bye! Bye.